All right, everybody. Good day. This is Andrew Connell. I'm uh, sorry. I guess technically it's the second of our um, live streams that we're doing. Um, but what I wanted to do is I, last week I did a dry run of this and this week um, I have spent a little bit more time like actually refining the process and stuff. And um, I'm looking forward to doing this again today or at least doing it the first time, I guess, is for most of you who are seeing this. Um, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you like how this whole thing, you know, sharing with you this, this process and stuff. So this is my first kind of like live stream in a sense um, and uh, broadcasting this over to the Voitanos Facebook page as a Facebook Live and I'm also doing it on the YouTube page um, as well. Um, and the reason what I want to do with this is that I get, a, I get a bunch of questions from people. Let me first kind of explain like what the idea here is behind uh, the topic of what we're going to cover today. Um, I call this the behind the scenes of like processing um, processing pull requests and issues in the SP dev docs uh, issue list. And so one of the roles that I serve, uh, that I myself serve with the Patterns and Practices core group, um, is that I, I triage and I process a lot of the pull requests and issues that come from the SP dev docs repository. Um, this is the primary repository for all things SharePoint development related. So developers can come here and they can ask questions, submit bugs, um, submit documentation updates, um, as well as pull requests um, uh, to update and to make modifications to the documentation. Um, and in addition to that, um, all comments that are left on the developer docs for the SharePoint developer docs on um, docs.microsoft.com, they all are added as issues to this issue list. Uh, so everything kind of goes here that's SharePoint developer related. So what I wanna to do today is I wanna kind of show you what my experience is like as one of the people responsible for, I don't know how you wanna say it, I like to refer to it as babysitting, but it's also like maintaining and triaging and cleaning up all this stuff um, with the issue list. Um, so before we get started though, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of take a second here and kind of just introduce myself real quick. So my name is Andrew Connell. Um, I'm a uh, SharePoint MVP or Microsoft uh, M365 MVP. And I've been doing this now for like 15 some odd years. Um, and like I said, one of the roles that I serve on the Patterns and Practices group, while it seems like everybody else on Patterns and Practices, they own a project um, of something like the Office 365 CLI or stuff like that. Um, I don't own a, anything like that. Uh, I don't own a project. Instead, I spend a lot of my time on the documentation, um, updating the docs, at creating new articles, um, cleaning up the docs, and then also uh, triaging the issues that come into the issue list. So the issue list that we're going to spend time looking at today, you can see that if you go to um, aka.ms slash spdev dash issues, that's going to take you to um, the issue list. So what I want to do is I want to switch over. Let's jump over to a demo, and let's take a look here at like at, at what this at what the issue list uh, looks like and the stuff that we have here. Now, what I want to do is I kind of want to run through a couple things um, before we do this. Um, now, one of, one of the things that I do every a couple times a week, I'm going to jump over here to um, uh, the task management thing that I use. So this app here, this is a uh, a, a uh, Think of this like my little to-do list. Um, this is what I use to maintain tasks for my business and and uh, different work-related things. And I have this task that is set up as a repet as a recurring task, and it actually shows up uh, once every three days. I think it's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, is when it shows up on my on my list. And it's just a reminder of things that I need to run through. Um, we're going to run through these. I'm going to run through a couple of these. I'm just going to show you what this experience is like. Um, and But before I do that, I kind of want to give you a little bit of an overview of the issue list. You can kind of see some stuff um, that's in there. So if I come over here to the issue list here, I've got a bunch of issues. And I've got a couple that I've already singled out that I want to uh, that I want to highlight for you um, that, uh, uh, that I think are they are good examples of either a good issue or a bad issue. And what I mean by a bad issue is I mean like, you know, th this is... This role that like that I serve, and a lot of people serve in this in this issue list. This is not the primary um, like support vehicle for Microsoft uh, in terms of SharePoint developers, right? It, the the way that's done really is you have to have a support contract with Microsoft. If you got a developer problem, 
you need to have a support contract. Um, and what this is, this think of this more as like community-based help, okay? Um, when you do this, now we've gotten pushback on this when I've said this in the past, but I, I really hope that people can understand what we mean by this. If when, when someone submits an issue and somebody is taking the time to try and help you, think about it that the easier I can make your job to help triage the problems that I'm having, um, the better that you can do, um, the, the more that, the better you can do with this, um, the better that, that, um, uh, let's see, the, be the better that you can make my life uh, and make it easier for me to help you, the more inclined I am to be able to help. And so what I mean by that is, you know, if I've got to sit there and look at what you've submitted, you just put, give me an issue that says, like, does not work right here, like this one that you see, right? So this one says, does not work. After simply after days of banging my head against the wall, I followed the instructions to the letter, but it simply does not work. There is absolutely nothing to go on here, all right? So the docs are have the only reason the docs were published is because the article worked at the time. So it seems to me that this is and because this is like we don't see this a lot showing up, seems to me that this individual just is having a is having a problem getting their stuff to work. But there's absolutely zero context around this. There's zero code that's been provided. There are zero screenshots. There's zero errors. That are, what doesn't work? Right? We don't know what works with this. I mean, they could simply say, I'm trying to type this into my iPad using um, a text edit or something like that, and it's not working. Well, it's not the context. So like for an issue like this that we would see, we come in and we already see somebody's already said, you know, please provide issues you're facing. I'm gonna go in and I have a comment that I've already created here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And I'm, no, that's not what's supposed to happen. Copy. Oh, I see what it's doing. There, now. So I'm just putting a comment here. It says, you haven't provided enough information to assist without some context, a repro reproduction steps, screen, screen captures, co or there's not much we can do to help you. And so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as, I'm gonna drop the comment in, but then I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna modify the labels. So I'm gonna remove the triage and I'm gonna say, uh, this needs context and detail. And we can tell that because of the page they posted it on, it's related to the SharePoint framework. So I am gonna go ahead and categorize it as uh, a general SharePoint framework uh, question that shows up. So what's gonna happen here? So we have a bot that runs behind the scenes and you see another label was just added to this guy. Um, what this did, we have a bot that runs behind the scenes. It was watching that I put the label of context detail and what it does is it's added in an extra bit of text here that basically is telling them, you got to help us out here. You got to give us you know, more info than what you've given us because there's not much we can do to help you with this. So what that will do is that also adds the author needs feedback. Now, what this is going to end up doing is it's going to, if the user has email uh, notifications turned on in GitHub on their account, they'll get an email with this and it's effectively going to start a timer, a 14 day timer. They've got seven days to respond, right? We don't want the issue list to be cluttered with a bunch of stuff that's just people have asked a question and then they never come back and follow up. If you ask a question and you never follow up and we, we, we come back to you and try and help you and then you never respond to us, there's nothing to go on. So we might as well just delete the issue or close the issue. But so what we do here is that we start this timer and this bot that runs behind the scenes says, I'm gonna give you seven days to respond. And if you don't respond with this author feedback on here, another label will get another comment will be added with another label that says no active no recent activity um, that effectively is saying stale issue man i mean if this this is stale you haven't done anything to help us so what we're going to end up doing um, is we're going to uh, go for another seven days and if you don't respond we're simply going to close the issue and, and just say look if you got if you really have a problem and you want to you want to uh you want us to engage you got to you got to be you got to play the game, right? In a sense, you got to got both sides have to be helpful here, um, and that timer will get abandoned if the original poster of this issue um, responds. If they respond at any point during that 14 day window, then the author feedback will get removed, and that timer just goes away. All right, so nothing is going to end up happening with that. Um, 
And so that's one way we keep we keep this issue list kind of clean and keep it from people keep people from from you know getting this thing all messy. Um, let me come back over here. Let me show you what I do. One of the things I do with this and see this link here where it says needs triage. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a tab for needs triage, and I want you to see like what what'll do what this does. So when a new issue gets created, if it gets created by someone coming to this issue list and clicking on new issue, or if they've added a uh, a comment from the docs. You always any new issues that get added to this list are going to get flagged or tagged with needs triage. OK, and so what that does when it says needs triage, that's going to um, uh, get filtered. And basically, it tells somebody like me that someone needs to take a look at this and somehow categorize it or do whatever. Now, one common misconception that people see with this. Actually, let me say one more thing before I do that. Um, if it was a comment that was left from the developer documentation at docs.microsoft.com, it'll also get this label of docs comment. Okay. Now, um, what 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 one one common misconception that we see that I see at least because I'm the one that does most of this stuff and in, in, in triaging the, these items that come in is that some people think that I'm going to answer every single question that comes in and that's simply not going to happen. Um, I my sweet spot is SharePoint framework stuff, maybe REST API stuff. Um, I don't want to enumerate all the things that I like. I feel like I've got a strong background on, but I have a strong background in specific areas. And that's the area. Those are the areas that I focus on with the issue list and responding. However, I can at least identify what all these different pro what the different things are that that are um, that show up in this list. And I can add specific categories to it or flag it if it's a question or something. Um, uh, something like that. So let me see if I have any here that I wanted to highlight. Uh, let's see, I had this one right here. So, so this one where it says rendering of custom web part is not happening between the navigation of two pages. So let me open up another tab with this. And what this issue is, is this is somebody who is, has basically they, I'll give you a quick summary of it, but they have a web part, they put it on a page and then they want to be able to jump between um, they want to be able to navigate with this web part being on multiple pages and they go from one page to the next page to the next page. And they're having a trouble with the web part is not like the page life cycle is not, or the, the web part life cycle is not um, being consistent with them. Like sometimes it's doing the on, on init, sometimes it's not doing, it's doing the on dispose, um, sometimes it's not. It seems to me like it's a page router issue. Let me get my. I, I have my notes here in OneNote, and of course, OneNote is saving these, uh, pasting my notes here as, um, it's pasting my notes here as uh, uh, images, and so my responses aren't aren't coming across correctly. So what I'm going to do here is I have this response that basically came back to them. I wrote this up previously, so I'm saving you guys for the time, but effectively, I'm just at, I'm saying, you know, to me, it smells like you're running into an issue with, with something called the page router. So I explain kind of what that is. Um, and then I have a couple other questions related to it. And so what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and I'm going to drop the comment here because I can tell it's a SharePoint framework. Um, I'm then going to come over here to the, the labels here. I'm going to remove triage and I can tell this is a SharePoint framework question. Um, and I'm just going to leave it as a, and I'm also going to have a, a needs follow up here. Um, need some feedback here because I did have a question for him like saying what exactly are you are you trying to do and so what that will do is that's expecting this person to come back and say you know help you know let me know what this is um, they did flag this question as you can see at the top they did flag it as a bug um, but not really sure if it really is a bug or not yet I'm um, just asking another question here but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through and, and flag it or add a label that says it is a bug um, or is, it, it is not a bug um, just yet um, we got other issues here that I wanted to highlight. So like, uh, what is this one I wanted to highlight? 5591. Ah, so this is a good one. So another thing, um, another one of the issues I have, or one of the things that I do is on a weekly basis, let's say if someone came in and uh, let's say a couple days ago, I went and I looked at this issue and I, which I did, if I scroll down here, um, I came back and I was like, there was a known issue a while ago check the version that you're doing. And then I added that um, author needs feedback that you see right here. Um, that's all fine and good. Um, the author needs feedback thing is, is all fine and good. Um, but a little bit farther down, they did respond. But 
to me, they, they, so when they responded, what it did was, remember where I said earlier, it removes the author feedback label and then it adds in the needs attention uh, label. And so what, what that mean, what, what I can do when I use that needs attention is that if somebody has responded, one of the things that I do is I go back and look for updates where people have responded. We've asked them to respond and they have responded. Now, it may not be me that asked them to respond, maybe somebody else, but regardless, they were asked to respond they've responded and maybe I, maybe it's something that I, that I can go back and I can address or it's a good highlight for somebody else. So um, in this case here, um, they had some stuff that they said um, that they went in, they, they gave me some stuff. Uh, I was like, you know, you still gotta give me more context. You haven't told me about the prompts. Now, what I mean by this about these prompts is that if I come over here and I create a new issue, so this person had created an issue, so they did that by coming over here and clicking on the, the new issue link. And what this um, button does is it takes you to a form where you choose one of the different types of issues you can create. Now, this issue list is for developer issues, right? Developer issues, developer questions, developer issues. So if you come in and you're trying to, you know, ask a question about, you know, the docs or something, what we do is I try and we try and like guide you in specific places if this is not the right place for you. So for example, with this one, if I want to go to, if I'm looking for a question related to the developer documentation, then I'm going to send them to the, that, to over to the docs. Um, if I've got somebody else, like let's say I've got uh, they, this, this one about tech community. If you submit a question here that is not developer, doc, developer related to SharePoint, like for example, if you send me a developer question related, if you send, sorry, not me, if you send the issue list, submit an issue, uh, a developer question related to Azure or Microsoft Graph, or if it's, if it's related to, and I mean specifically related to those things, like, I mean, there's obviously overlaps with stuff, but if it's not SharePoint developer related and it's like an end user issue or it's a administrative issue or configuration issue, we're gonna flag it as it's not a developer issue and that'll automatically close the issue because we can't do anything about that here in this issue list. And I know it seems kind of silly, but it is what it is. If there is a real bug that that is found here, Microsoft isn't going to isn't going to come to this issue list, and uh, and a developer, even a Microsoft engineer, can't say this is a real bug in the UI. We need to fix it. It actually has to go into a different process. I get it. It's in my opinion, it's kind of stupid. It's big company stuff, big corporate kind of stuff, and everything stuff they got to figure out. But it is what it is, and so. We guide you and say, look, if you've got an end user problem, go to tech community. That's where it should go. If you're trying to do a feature request, again, that doesn't belong here either. Um, we're going to send you over to user voice. That's where Microsoft triage is uh, potential things that you could do, right? So, or things that do submissions or changes that you can request. If we see it as a feature request, then we tag it as a feature request. It'll put a comment in the issue that says, hey, this should be done as a, as a user voice submission and then it closes the issue. The one in this case that, I, that, I, that was frustrating to me that I was that I kind of jumped on this, uh, that I, I made a comment of um, in that issue, which I told the person, hey, look, you, you didn't give us any context. When you created this new issue here, we have this section here about like a developer environment and it talks all about, here are the different things that we need from you. Let me put this in preview mode, you can see a little bit better. So with your environment, um, it tells you first delete this before submitting, but then all this stuff, it's like, you know, what browser are you using? What framework are you using? What's your operating system? What tooling are you using? Uh, I'm gonna show you where we're gonna make an update to this in just a minute. But it doesn't give us any context. What version of Node do you have installed if you're doing SharePoint framework stuff? Without that information, there's not a whole lot that we can do with this, right? So what we did, what we're doing here, I guess, not what we did, but what we're doing with this is if I, um, what I what I mentioned to them in their issue was I said um, we need more context. You deleted a lot of the prompts in the section of the original post. So again, I I tagged them again with context. I need context, detail, and attention. And that was automatically added the author feedback. Again, the person responded with just a giant gulp drop and uh, or gulp output drop and um, with another error here. But there's the the main root of the question was. I mean, I had a lot of feedback for this person or a response that I had, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in actually in just a, right here. So let me go ahead and paste that in. That's a typo. 
first you have it. Let's run that. Okay. So effectively what I'm do what I did here is I just said, look, you, you haven't given us enough context. And that's why I was talking about my last reply. So that's the first thing. Second of all, I saw an issue with what they posted. Um, and thirdly, I just said, you've got a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in this project. And then if you're not, you know, externalizing some stuff, then you're, you're building a gigantic, um, you're building a gigantic, a gigantic bundle. So I'll go ahead and drop this comment in here, trying to prompt them again. And I'll do the exact same thing. I'm going to remove attention to deep attention to detail. And I'm going to say, yep, we still need feedback on this one. Okay. And I know it can seem like we're being nagging or whatever, but I mean, if I keep asking, we keep asking questions, this is the way that we communicate it, communicate these things to you. So let's look at it. We got any, any other ones here. I do have a couple other ones I wanted to highlight. Uh, 55, it was at 50, 5589. Is that one still showing up as a triage? 595, no, I don't see that. So let's do it. Let's open, um, nope, that one's specific. I want to come back to that in a second. Oh, here's one. So this is kind of a compliment. Um, command runs super duper fast, sweet. And as you can see, Bo says, hey, it's great. Kind words. Yep, sweet. Okay. Everyone's kind of like saying nice stuff here, but appreciate it. But it doesn't really go in. There's nothing really to act on here. So we'll just, you know, be friendly. Hey, thank you very much. Um, that's awesome. So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to close this thing. Go ahead and move, no, remove the triage. And I'm just going to go ahead and close the issue because, I mean, there's really nothing to do with this. But hey, love the compliment. Love good feedback. Um, another one here with this one. Add in permissions at the list level. Let's go through this. My goal when I sit down to do this is to get through to where there's nothing left on the triage. Um, I want all of those done. All the triages should be completely done. Let's just double check and make sure. A couple things here. Let me make a quick change here. It looks like I've got a problem with my stream. I can improve this a bit. Getting a little bit of a warning here about my feed. I think I have my, it says my frame rate's too high. Again, it's part of my part of my newness of doing this. Um, I have to go back and look at that because it doesn't look like my frame rate's too high. But is it actually looks like I have it set to th to to um, thirty frames a second? But and it's telling me to do that. But I have that, so my camera's not set up to be. I don't know. Anyway, okay. Um, add in permissionless level. Can it be done? Okay, so this one you kind of need a little more context with, but I know what this one is. I looked at it ahead of time. Someone's basically saying, can I do add in permissions at a list level or a, at, a, at a web level? Add in permission or permissions with add-ins, they are, they, are, they are to an entire site collection. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just comment on this. Unfortunately, no. At the TLD. At the site collection. There we go. So because they're applied there, unfortunately, no. So I'll go ahead and comment. And what this is, this is a question about add-ins. And it was a question that has been answered. Now, what's cool about that is that now that it's been flagged as answered, is that I th the, we have a, the bot will kick in and it will wait, I think, like three days, maybe five days. But if the answer remains, if the person didn't have any kind of a follow up to their question um, and it's marked as answered, then it'll automatically close the issue. So it'll get that out of the way. Um, but I won't see that again, which is good. So then I can go back to my issue list. Didn't mean to close that. There we go. Uh, and now you can see it's gone. So here, let's go through and open some other stuff here. So this one we'll look at in just a minute. Let's look at this one. Uh, this one says, T -t 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 getting started with Power Automate link doesn't work. Clicked on the link, it didn't work. I was seeing it yesterday. It looks like the link is working now. So, okay, everything's fixed. So this is not really, there's really nothing we can do with this. So I'm just gonna leave it as, what was it? Uh, I guess it was by design. I'll just leave it as by design. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and close that issue out. 
And let's see what else we got here. How about fix for fix for dev office com? What does that mean? I've accessed dev office com up. Oh, it's a dupe of 5597. Is that the other one that we have here? Yep. Okay. So what this one did is that this issue, they're reporting a, a problem with a URL. And you can see here that uh, this guy, so this is uh, Bo Cameron. Bo, who's also on the PMP team, uh, Bo jumped in and said, this is a duplicate issue. So what we try and do is we try and keep the issue list from getting a lot of duplicate issues uh, to show uh, of showing up. And so the way that we do that is what I'll do is that if there is an issue, we call it out as being a dupe and see how Bo put in this pound with the number in there. What's cool about that is if you come over here and look at this at this issue at 5597, when he did pound 5597, GitHub automatically linked that this issue to the other one. And notice here that when Bo did that, you can see that it added this extra entry um, into uh, the list. So what's cool about this then, and I can also see that someone's already submitted a pull request to fix this. All right, cool. So I'll come back to that in a minute, but because this is a dupe, I'm gonna come over here, remove triage, and we actually have a, a tag for dupe. And what that will do is you'll notice that that's gonna automatically get closed by our bot. All right, so let's see what else we got here. And property of two string. Let's just double check with that one. And this one, uh, you know what? This person, there was absolutely, there's no, there's no context here. So I have one for this. So notice this person has created an issue, but they deleted our entire template and just put an error in this and then a picture. So, I mean, my nature would say, I would shut this, I would delete this right away um, and delete this issue just being like, that's this is completely invalid. There's absolutely nothing here we can do with this. They didn't do it from the from the docs. They actually did it by coming to the issue list, creating a new issue, and so they had to have deleted that template. Um, frankly, that's, that's really irritating uh, because it shows that they're not taking any time to help. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna tag it as, a, as an issue. I'm gonna put a, uh, that's something with tooling but I'm also gonna say something about context, right? Um, and so that's gonna flag it back to them saying, you've given us absolutely no context and I actually have a response that I already typed up for this person. So I'm just gonna leave it as that. So there we go, so asking for context. All right, so now where are we with our issue list? We are, all right, sweet. So I've done everything I normally wanna do with this. Now this last one here, there's, this is gonna apply to a pull request. And so I'm, I'm gonna switch gears for a second and I wanna look at pull requests. So this is something else that I do um, on a, uh, try, I try to do this on like a weekly basis here. Wow, people have been updating the last few minutes too. Uh, well, not a few minutes, I guess three hours. Okay, so these pull requests, this is stuff that where people have made a change and they've submitted it to the repo for someone to look at to merge their changes into the live website. Um, these are really, and so all this stuff is really good. Now, one of the things that I do is that, again, one of the things I look at is I, uh, here we go, look for any PRs with review changes requested. And then I also close any issues that li are listed as please close. So if I open this guy up, one of the things this will do is if someone has, some, not everybody has access to be able to close stuff, but if you have an issue and you put, the, the um, hashtag um, please dash close, then when we see that, I'll look at the issue and I can go ahead and close these things for you. So there are some people who don't have right access to the issue list, but they can tell that this thing doesn't need to be open and that's how they end up getting closed. All right, so uh, that was one thing, but then the other thing that I do is I come over here and I look at where we had a pull request with reviews changed, changed um, the review was changes requested. And so here, these are a bunch of PRs that I looked at and I asked for um, I asked for people to make some changes to it. So this one where it says fix broken links in Office UI, so Office UI Fabric. So let's go to this. Now look at what this guy did. So this is what this is a beautiful uh, pull request that was submitted. When you create a new pull request, you're going to get this experience that you see here. All right. 
Um, and you get this template that gets put in. And it's like, is it a new article or is it a content fix that you're doing? And so what, um, and forgive me if I mispronounce your name, but what, what Nan, is it fully spelled out here? Yeah, so what Nandeep did is he went in and he deleted the one that said new issue or new article and just checked off the one that says content fix. Fantastic, so I know you're fixing something. Second thing, are there any related issues? The template gives you a way to go through and to link to different issues and see where he's got pound 5597. Well, if you go back to the issue that we were looking at before, here's where he went through and he, he, had, he had put the hashtag in the, the actual PR 5597. And what that did is that added in a link into the issue so that now we have this nice cross-linking thing going back and forth. That's great because by, by seeing that, that's gonna allow us to see um, to very easily find stuff and, and to fix any kind of an issue that's showing up or to be able to automatically close this. Now, when I went through and I looked at this, I can see the commit that he did. And when I went and I looked at his change um, and forget all this red text, this is just, um, it's just formatting stuff that's going on with GitHub. So it's not a big deal. But if you look here, uh, let's see if I can find my changes. All right, so see the red part is what is what he had submitted in his change. Oh no, sorry. The green part is what he had submitted. So notice here, there's this en-us. So most people can't tell with this stuff. And so, um, but I, as somebody who's worked a lot with the Microsoft documentation, I know what their rules are and what they're going to be expecting us to do. And so in this case here, I know that the developer.microsoft.com site has, a, has something that will automatically reroute to the proper localized content based on the user's HTTP um, request headers, the user agent um, that's coming in, not the user agent, the locale for their current browser. So I know that they do not want us to put any of the locales in the URL. So if I went to this URL right here, right to where it says, well, that was the URL he had actually changed. Sorry, this is what he, he this is what the content was originally set up as. This is what his change was, and you can see this better. If I go to files changed. So left side is what the content used to be. Right side is what he had changed it to. And what he had changed it to was he had actually put in the ENUS right in this area. And that's why when you saw in my comp in the conversation I had with him, I said, like, I saw the ENUS and I said, please remove the locale link. Um, that's set dynamically, blah, blah. Now, when I did that, as I reviewed it, it actually said, I am requesting, I'm requesting you to make changes. Well, he's already come back and he's already addressed those things. He actually had it in two spots. He went in and he removed the locale from his changes right here in, in this comment. He fixed it. I can go and I can look at the content that he's modified. So I can see up here, files change. I'll go look at the content. Yep, sure enough, no ENUS, no ENUS. Fantastic. So review changes. Everything looks good. So I'll just say, yep, I approve it. Okay, so everything has now been approved. So there's my approval for the, the change I requested. And now I can go in and I can merge this into master. So when I say confirm merge, now watch what happens. Notice that the, the open switched to merge. And if I go over to that other issue that he had cross-linked, it's now closed because it shows that he's, um, that, that I went through and I just closed it because it got because it got merged. And you can see here, actually, if I refresh this, you'll see that this PR will, be, will show as merged. There, so see the PR is now listed this is merged. Now what that means, what's gonna happen with this is that his changes have now been applied to the master branch, the way the developer docs work. There is a live branch and then Microsoft is responsible for taking the, what's in master, putting it in live, which makes it go out to the public site. So you won't see these changes right now. If you're watching this live, you'll see those these changes show up like in a little bit, okay? Um, okay, so now, Let's go back and let's look at what other PRs that we have here. Uh, looks like we got a couple other ones. Did anybody make these changes for me yet? So I'll go open up these three real change. I've seen nothing since then. So I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna close that. Same thing with this one, change requested. Nothing since I did that. So I'm just gonna close it. Changes requested, nothing, yeah. Okay, so nothing I can do with those guys, these three. So let's take a look at these. So I'm gonna go over here, let's look at these PRs. All right, what's in this one? Broken link, fixes a broken link. All right, let's take a look at that. 
web parts, web dash parts. Let's go look at that dock real quick. Oh, that's not there. That's going to be over here. And we can just check this. There's there's different ways of checking this. I'm going to do. I have a fast way of doing it. So we're going to go find the section on web parts, and just click into one of them. Yep, web dash parts. Let's switch guidance to this. Yep, valid link. Cool. So I'll come over here. Everything looks good. Review them. Approve. Submit. Merge. Confirm. Merged. All right. Sweet. Let's go look at the next one. Uh, how about let's do mentioned library can be hosted from site app catalog. I jump around with these things sometimes. So for the initial article, one may think you can only do this. Tell this. Check the uh, changed. Let's look at it. what did he say again? So from the initial article commit content, one may think you can only render SharePoint library components from the tenant app catalog. However, I've been testing this and not correct. You can also host these components in site app catalogs. Maybe useful in the sense that you have a site collection for. Uh, I'm not going to do this one just yet. Uh, I'm going to come back to that one because I believe that that's not supported um, off the top of my head. I may be wrong. I'm just I'm just flustered because we're live. I'll look at that later though. Uh, here we go, a partial fix for this guy. All right, so I have proposed these changes because when trying to navigate, when trying to leverage this on an extension using Yeoman, I had issues when the code solution was error. Let's just see how big of a change he's talking about. These are code changes. All right, I'm not gonna do this one right now because that's gonna, I wanna review it. I don't wanna just run through that. Let's look at this one real quick. Window location query. Is this the one I just looked at? A better one to use the URL query. Query, dot, query to search. One browser. Hmm, I don't know about this. So I'm just going to comment on this because I don't want to. We don't want to just make a change, just because um, someone thinks it should be changed. Like we've had some. Some people will submit stuff saying, "I don't like the way you did the sample. Here's a here's a better way to do it." That requires somebody to go through and review the sample, and that can take some time. So, I mean, it would help if it's more than just I think it could be better. Um, let's see. So that's a list of all of them. Now, how would I go about submitting an, a, a pull request, right? So I have one where I've actually, I've already gone through and I made some changes this morning. So I'm going to come over here to my um, GitHub account where I had forked the SP Dev Docs issue list. Here we go. And I have a branch. Which one, update build issues. Okay, so what I had done is I was updating this branch is 100 commits behind master. Wow. Okay, so now I am not, if it's 100 commits behind, there's no way I'm going to go through and just refresh this. We'll do this in a different video, a different time. But basically what I was doing in this list, or in this, this change, actually, let me do this real quick. Um, you guys aren't going to see this, as I'm not going to, well, I can share my screen with this. Let me do that. So let me change this. So let me show you what, I, what I'm going to do here. Let me get my window set up correctly. And then I'm going to explain what I did. So how do I, let's add another screen capture. So let's switch to VS Code, but that's not the right one. Hold on, let me get the VS Code on the right repo. 
So here's what I did this morning before this before I did um, we started this live stream. I actually went in and I wanted to um, I wanted to show you how to go about how to go about submitting changes to um, the uh, um, uh, submitting a pull request. But in order to do that, um, I needed to make some changes, and so. To code and so I made some changes this morning um, to the repo there we go so now you can see my code so I just made I made some changes um, to this uh, this morning let's, see, let's make that look bigger so you guys can see that well it might be too big oh boy that's really big um, to the templates because the templates originally were having like they were inconsistent on the context and so what I did is I just I added some other stuff to make things to give it a little bit more context. But clearly we've we've made a bunch of changes um, by merging pull requests in, and somebody else has been making changes to the to the main um, uh, to the main master list. And so my stuff is now out of sync with what um, with what the the uh, the repo and the the main repo is. Not my fork is out of sync with with theirs. If that's the case, you saw that it said that my branch was 100 commits behind. So we're going to fix that. And what that the way that way you fix that is by um, refreshing your fork because you only want to add stuff to the top of the of the branch. You don't want to go through and add your stuff if your stuff if you're way behind. Okay. So here's I'm going to fix that. First step is I need to refresh my master branch on my local on my laptop in my fork. So I'm gonna come over here and do a git checkout master. Okay, now, the next thing I wanna do, now, so watch my hands with this, okay? I've got stuff on my local laptop, right here, or right there, or actually, yes, yeah, right back there. My changes, my local copy is a clone of my GitHub accounts fork of the Microsoft SP dev docs issue list. And you saw that in the browser a second ago. So what I need to do in order to submit my update is I need my fork to be equal to what's going on in the main one. So to do that, I need to go to my laptop down here and pull everything, the latest stuff from the Microsoft repo down onto my, into my fork, push those back up to my chain, my fork in my GitHub account, and then push those up to um, the Microsoft uh, repo. Okay, so if you if you just Google uh, refresh a fork, it'll make it'll make sense. Basically, I just need to make myself current. So I'll do that by saying, and I have a I have a remote that's already been set up. A remote. Um, so if I do a git remote dash v, I have a origin which is pointing to my GitHub account, and I have an upstream remote pointing to the SharePoint dev docs. So what I'm going to say is I want to get pull from upstream master branch. That's going to pull in all the stuff that I don't have in my fork from the SharePoint one. I'm going to take that and I'm going to push that to my origin, which is what the default is. So now my master is going to be equal to uh, the, the same place, they're now equal up in, up in GitHub. But remember, I have my changes on a separate branch. So I'm gonna check out my branch. Uh, what did I call it? Update, yeah, update build issues. So this guy now, my update build issues is behind master because we just pulled new stuff into master. I need to get my stuff. So like if this is, if this is my stuff that's on my laptop, this branch right here has a couple changes like right here. The problem is though, is that master has stuff above it. I should only, a really good pull request should only add stuff to the top because if it's down here, I can create a conflict and there's no way that, that somebody is gonna merge those in. I would never, I would never merge in a submission um, if someone didn't have that cleaned up because basically you're saying, hey, I made some changes, they're gonna cause some conflicts, but you go clean those up. No, no, no. If you're gonna contribute, you need to fully contribute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, take everything from master and push it into, into this branch. And the way I'm gonna do that is by saying, I want to rebase my branch off the tip of master. So take my stuff and put it onto the top. Get rebase off master. 
there. So now I did that. So now if I do a git log, and let's just do, a, I'll, I'll just do one line to keep things clean. I can see, git master, okay, you can't see it here. I can see Nandeep did some stuff. There you go, there's Nandeep's thing right there as well. Fix broken links. Okay, so I've got my changes, git log. So we can see the changes that other people had done. And then that's old. Okay, so now I should be able to say git push. Now what this is gonna do is this is gonna push my changes back up to back up to my fork. All right, cool. Now let's go back to our browser. All right, and you should be able to see that. Nope, it just switched it back. Go back to browser. Ta da. Cool. Now I'm going to refresh. Much better. This branch is even with master. Actually, why aren't my changes ahead of it? Well, that's now frustrating because I made some changes this morning. Man, did I lose my stuff? It appears I've lost my changes. Oh well, at least you get to see. So I'll go back and I will fix that. You know what? We'll just fix it right now, ladies and gents. Let's go back to our changes. Configure. Let's go back and switch over back over to VS Code. Close this up. What changes was I making? We had, I had under the feature requests. Nope, we didn't want to do anything with feature requests. Close that out. Custom. Environment details. This is where I was making the request here. So environment details. I wanted to ask not only your operating system, I also wanted to get, we also wanted to ask for, and none of this stuff should have a space in front of it. It is target, target environment. And that is, for example, SharePoint server 2016, SharePoint server 2019, SharePoint online. I'll just leave it like that. Uh, a couple things I remember I changed before as well. I wanted to make all of these show up as ORs. So we'll just do space OR. And then I also wanted these to be bolded at the beginning, just to kind of clean it up a bit. So stars, stars, there we go. Uh, environment uh, environment details, I'll just do that. So target environment. So what we'll do is I will copy all of this and from custom, I want that exact, I want it to mirror what is in the bug request. I really don't understand why I lost my stuff. It doesn't matter, we're fixing it, but. Uh, so we wanted that, feature request didn't matter. And I think Issue template was the base one that we had. Yep. Ta-da. And we will save our changes like that. Sweet. So here we go. Issue template. All right. So fix up. Well, let's see. Um, update issue templates for consistency. Added target environment as guidance. Might be misspelled. Um, and uh, duped across all issues for consistency. All right, so I will save my changes. Sweet, and we will push those up. Oh, you know what I did? I think I already know what I did. <laughs> I think I picked the wrong branch. I sure did. All right, so let's go back to our demo, back to our browser. So let me switch over to browser. I know exactly what I did. I am on the wrong branch. Fix up issue templates. One commit ahead, five behind. Okay, that's what I did wrong. All right, so you guys are not gonna see this. I'm gonna do this really fast. So anyway, I made changes this morning. When I just said refresh, 
the um, refresh the branch and it said I was 100 things behind, yeah, that screwed up. There was no way that that was the case. Um, I should and that should have that should have been I should have caught that. I was only, only like four or five behind, in which I basically refreshed the wrong branch. That's why I didn't see my changes. My changes were already there. So if I come over here, um, you can't see this, but I'm just going to jump back and forth. Um, I need to say get um, checkout fix up issue templates. Uh, get rebase off master, get push. All right, so what you're gonna see, there we go. So that's the one fix up template. This is the one I wanna look at. So I'm gonna go to this, this branch. I'm one commit ahead. And if I look at the list of commits, I look at the list of commits, fix up. Here's the one that I had, oh, too fast. Here's the one that I had updated this morning or I added this morning, right? And then there's the detail. Added additional prompts for target environment and all that stuff. All right, cool. So here's how you go through and you submit a pull request. You can do it one of two ways. You can do it from your branch in your repo, or you can go to the main one, like here, this is the main SP dev docs. And I want to go through and I can say, go through and compare and create a pull request. Now let's see the best way of doing this. Uh, make sure you can actually spell. Huh. So here, these are the two, these are the comments from my commit. So I'm going to cut those out, and I'm going to put them down down here. We have a section down here that says what's in the pull request. These two things are in the pull request. I can get rid of the guidance section here because it even says at the very bottom. You can delete this paragraph after reading it. Come back up here to the top. Uh, what kind of a category is this? This is a, it's not really a content fix, but that's kind of where it goes. Delete this line. I will do that. Um, delete this paragraph and you're done. Got it. Related issues. There are no related issues, but I'm not going to delete this. I'm just going to say this is not, a, not applicable. And then I will create the pull request. What this is doing is it's going to modify the templates that people, when they create a new issue. So that now I'll go ahead and merge this in. Come on. So what's going on here is that you can't merge. There's a build process that's going on with the share with the all docs.microsoft.com. Everything's going to build, and if there's ever an error during the build, then um, the it'll it'll flag this as being a bad build. So right now, this is I can't merge this until this this completes. Okay. So. Let's, let me jump over here. I see some people have left a couple comments. So why don't I see if I can go find those comments. Maybe I'm jumping over here on another browser. see so let me go come on Facebook's taking a second to render here come on Facebook Oh, huh. no real comments, just or some comments and stuff, but yeah, cool. Looks like some stuff might happen with our Facebook video. Oh, look at that. I did screw it up with YouTube. Ah, apparently you have to click go live. Well, I just totally screwed up the entire stream. Daggummit. Oh, well, it is what it is. Uh, here we go, but check it out. Our update over here, it shows, ta-da, we can merge the pull request. So I will say merge pull request and I will confirm the merge. Ta-da, all the changes have been done. So now if I come over here to our issues list, and if I create a new issue, and if I say I got a bug report, we now have a new thing in the template 
that will prompt people to say, oh, come on, because we were getting this as a thing, target environment, SharePoint 2016, 2019, SharePoint Online. Ta-da. Cool. So it looks like I screwed up my YouTube stream because it looks like nobody was watching it because I never clicked the go live. I didn't know you had to do that. I thought that the app I was using would automatically do that. That's dumb. Uh, but anyway, just I'm a newbie. I didn't do it. My bad. All right. That's everything that I wanted to cover today. Uh, I guess I don't really have too much of a call to action. I'm curious what you thought about the live stream. Uh, again, like I said, I've never really, I've never really done this before. So well, not not really done this before. But I've really I haven't done this before. Um, but today, so what were we doing today? The whole thing that I was doing today that I wanted to focus on was all about kind of taking you behind the scenes and what it looks like to triage pull requests and issues uh, with the SP Dev Docs issue list. Hopefully I gave you a little bit of insight into how this works um, and I hope you might've learned something. And so with that, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this today. And I will, if you got any questions or something, one of, uh, if you got any questions related to this, please feel free to follow, to comment um, on this video, um, either on the YouTube channel or on Facebook. Might have to go back to that YouTube stream and delete it and uh, upload the video um, that from after I download it from Facebook. So just I was a bit of an idiot. Um, but yeah, I guess with that, I got nothing left. So with that, I will leave everybody to their days and we'll see everybody next time we do this. Thanks a lot.